I just got a phone call from JetBlue Airway airline. Too bad you can't really see the the commemorative lights on this. Thing. Commemorative lights. Oh yes. Awesome. Don't forget 9/11. Torch a building. <laughs> Do your thing. Ooh, it's still on. Be cool. Ooh. Yeah, that's really cool. The red flashing light on the plane. Yeah. The photoshopped other plane. Yeah, that they, they added in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure why they thought that 9-11 needed another plane. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I to question, like, wh whatever country it is that this came from? Liberia. The Liberian... Isn't that where all commemorative things come from? You know, like, get your new Elvis stamp. Authentic, real, certified Liberian stamp. You know, it's like, real, real stamp. Well, what's the country that released the... I don't know. I'd have to look at my Adbusters archives, but they had the Marx Lenin commemorative stamp. That's probably Liberia. With Groucho and John. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. The Marx Lenin. Those aren't the first two people that come to mind when I think of Marx and Lenin. <laughs> um, Liberia is the country we created for reparations for slaves. Yeah, it's kind right. of the. Uh, uh, we'll throw you a little boat. Israel. <laughs> the Israel of Africa. Um, well, actually, technically, if it was the Israel of Africa, shouldn't it have been, like, it, it smack dab in the middle of Baghdad or something? Or Yeah, really, that's true. Well, you know, Liberia boasts a fleet of passenger vessels that is astounding, like, almost almost every major like cruise ship is like whether they be Norwegian or whatever they're registered in Liberia because they have the the broadest they're the international labor the model. Delaware of <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, it's okay to work somebody 14 hours a day for two months in a row without a day off you know and pay them six dollars an hour and then take all the money back to sell them toothpaste and toilet paper so yeah and then, of course, Franklin Mint, we know, is, you know, they're based in Liberia mm. also for their commemorative coins and plates and, you know, all of the actual Liberian currency. And, well, the Franklin Mint has a 9-11 has a coin. Yeah, Have and it's real that? currency because it's you yeah. can spend it in Liberia. Yeah. <laughs> which is well, and it's got <laughs> silver from, from the ground zero. zero. Yeah, that sounds very Liberian to me. I want to go to Liberia. Just to see if it's full of Libertad. You know, <laughs> I, I want to see the liberty in Liberia. So <coughs> when they when they call it Liberia and they were thinking the name Liberty, I don't think they were thinking of for the common person. They were thinking we have the liberty to do whatever the fuck we want. We can make up our own laws. Thomas Jefferson liberty <laughs> instead of the Alexander Hamilton liberty. Yes, exactly. So. Uh, yeah. I think I have to. Oh, it's Carl Zeiss lens. Same lens as Casio's. I used to have a Carl Zeiss uh, wide angle lens that would screw on the front, but. Carl Zeiss in. It's somewhere in a box, somewhere in the world. You know who Carl Zeiss is? <laughs> yeah, he's like the. The lens guy. The lens guy. For NASA. Yeah. Uh, he created the Hubble lenses, right? Well, the Hubble lenses come from his ceramic convex lenses rather than just flat concave lenses. Glass lenses? Yeah. But that's a glass lens, right? Yeah, for it being the middle middle model uh, camcorder. Handycam. Handycam. Oh, 2001, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely glass. I like how flicker how it uh, tells you oh yeah everything does that on I use P-Base I have the only one of the, I only have I have the only camera of this on Flickr it shows up I'm the only person who wow. takes pictures of this model on Flickr of uh not of babies or just in general just at all 
at all. Yeah. Right if you, yeah, if you click on the rest of the, it, it, it has some some extra weird thing in the model number that freaks Flickr out because there's people who have similar cameras but not this one. <coughs> Yeah, they're really unrelenting with the, the buses here, aren't they? Yeah. Coffee, you need to like that. We have this cool camera in Hawaii um, where I was staying. Um, I convinced them we have like all this extra money called the volunteer fund, um, which is no nothing like it sounds like it is. It's basically to buy liquor and drugs for all the kids <laughs> who like work for me. Um, <coughs> and we had a shitload of money left over. It kind of sounds like it could be that. What? It could, it could be the volunteer fund. Could be. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just a good fund. <laughs> it's a great fund. It's it, you know, we had a big, huge mushroom and ecstasy ceremony party. We had, a, you know, a couple of raves. We got some. I mean, we got a, a DJ from LA, an amazing DJ, to fly over and play for us for two nights. Um, so the volunteer fund is kind of like a like a cushy little fund that we have. And uh, the first thing that they had when I uh, when I showed up there, the first thing they bought. You're was gonna be interesting. I showed up. Uh, am I being interesting? Not really. I was actually. I thought it was more interesting with your hair. Um, the first thing that, that they bought right after, right before when I got there was a, a projector, which is really cool because I had this idea of we had this huge pasture meadow uh, with like a sloping bowl to it. So uh, it was my bright idea to take a bunch of king size white sheets and sew them up to make a big movie screen so we could show movies outdoor on the lawn, um, which it kind of worked. Um, then it rained and they turned green with mold. So uh, I mean, it lasted for like, you know, one movie. Um, for these. Uh, so I convinced him to get this, uh, <coughs> uh, this Canon XLS Steadicam, like, it's like the kind that they used to shoot porn and soap hoppers with. Like a really <laughs> nice, like, you know, $20,000 camera, like an outrageously overpriced camera. Like, I convinced them to buy this camera to document, like, you know, all the volunteers and, like, how this volunteer program is so incredible so they can, you know, use it to sell the program. Um, so I didn't really have any, I didn't have any concept of like how we were going to use it to sell the program. So I had to start a blog and a, or a website for the volunteers. So that way in all the marketing material to try to get kids to come over there and pay us to work there, you know, to pay us to volunteer. Um, <laughs> that that um, we can send them links to like a blog where all the, all the current and ex-volunteers are just posting about how great it is. And we can put up videos. Everything. And it worked. I mean, that was my whole backstory to get that $20,000 on a video camera. Um, and, and then the great thing about the video camera... It's like two 39s in a row. Yeah. It's like been three in the last half hour. It's the one that goes through the veterans hospital system. So sometimes it's oh, really cool. slow. But it's really got all the... Yeah. I've been on a train, but I killed people. Yeah. <laughs> Vietnam. Yeah, tell that story. Uh, oh, okay. Um... Go. So, go. And <laughs> insane. And so, so me and my husband, Ryan, um, we're uh, waiting for the train and we've moved from inside the intermodal station in Sacramento out to the outer area, modal. The outer modal, <laughs> the area between the train station and the train tracks. And um, some, you know, crooked old Vietnam vet with his green, you know, veteran's jacket on and his. POW MIA patch on the side of it. He's just looking gnarly and obviously reeking of cheap liquor. Um, he's squashed down and he's all, hey, where's the train coming from? And I'm like, uh, that's, you know, it's coming, going to go that, that way. It's coming from there. He's all, well, that, that north? And I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going north. I hope that's the way the train comes and goes. <laughs> and so he's all, you sure? And so I decided to step out behind the building to look for the North Star so I could, you know, say, hey, see, there's the North Star. It is north. The train's going to come from that direction. And I kind of walked back to him and go, where are you going? I was done talking to you. And I'm like, okay, I was just checking on the star, dude. I wanted to make <laughs> sure that I told you that the train's coming from that, that direction. Um, so he, uh, there he's off. Never been on a train before. A little nervous. I'm nervous. I haven't been on a train. I was like, well, it's a, you know, I'm going to get on a train. It's pretty cool, you know. Just, he's all, he's all, killed lots of people. He's never been on a train. <laughs> um, 
and kept reiterating that he killed lots of people and then had to stand up and shout it really loud so everybody knew that he's killed lots of people. Um, as a matter of fact, in, uh, in our half hour or ten minutes of sleeping on the train, uh, Ryan, kid I was with, uh, uh, actually dreamt that the old crazy uh, veteran guy was sitting behind him and going to slice his throat. <laughs> Fortunately, they didn't let him on the train because uh, he was wildly announcing how he's killed lots of people. <laughs> how he stumbled around drunk and poor guy had a ticket and stuff that he stuck in Sacramento, not Portland. So we can we can send him over to kill a lot of people, but you just can't talk about it when you get back. Yeah, and don't <laughs> shout it out in front of a bunch of people getting on a train in the middle of the night. It's spooky because there's you know there's crime on those trains. I took the train to uh, dot crime. <laughs> yeah, huh? no, I uh, took a train to uh, it was a year ago, March 11th. It's been an exactly a year that uh, my sister. Uh, for Christmas, all she wanted to do was take a train to Disneyland. Um, which, I don't know if that's what I would ask for for Christmas or what I was hoping she would ask for. You know, so usually she asks for like snowboard, you know, skateboard, curly things like that. Tetherball, basketball hoop. Um, she asked for uh, a train trip to Disneyland. And uh, so we decided that's what we'd give her. So. My mother and sister and I took the 17-hour train ride down to, well, it was a train ride to Bakersfield, a bus from Bakersfield from L.A. and a train from L.A. to Anaheim, so it really kind of sucked. But on the train, um, this dude who we were chatting with in the lounge car <coughs> went downstairs to the cafe to do whatever, but there's a woman like with two kids who went down before him, and when she came, when she came back up, there was this big uproar, and the conductors were coming because she went into the bathroom, and came out with her kids after changing like one of their diapers or something and this this guy we were talking to went in the bathroom after her and she realized she left her wallet in there. And so, you know, she waited and stuff and uh, when he came out her wallet was in there, but all like five hundred dollars all the money she had in the world, you know, like this poor woman and her two kids was not in the wallet. And this like dude, ex con dude who was <laughs> going to meet his brother in law in Paso Robles or something, I don't know, some random place. Like came out of the bathroom, so it was just—I mean, it was totally obvious that he like stole the money. Um, so while the conductors are figuring out how they're going to deal with it, they decide that um, he can either let them. Yeah, don't they have bulls? Where's the railroad bull? Yeah, so they decide <laughs> that. Yeah, the railroad bulls decide that they—they're going to. He can either empty out all of his pockets and let them look through his stuff, which they don't have. They said they don't have the right to ask, or they can have the sheriff do it when we pull into the next town. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that is beautiful. Uh, and uh, well, we can, you know, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. So I'm sitting in the lounge car while this whole process is happening, kind of just trying to, you know. Like what happened to his face when they said the word sheriff? Yeah, I know. Huh? It's like he when an ex-con hears he the word sheriff, he should just take the 500 bucks out of his you know, pocket. You know, he's like go. he looked pretty hard. You know, like tat prison tattoos on the knuckles and the hands and stuff. You know, one on the neck. You know, like he's got the teardrop on the eye. You know, so he, he looked pretty hard. Like he definitely was on some sort of probation or parole. You know, he could have been, you know, I don't know the tattoos mean that, but he, he definitely had the right tattoos. So, <laughs> um, so he, uh, I see him pacing inside the lounge car, and there's just me and this other dude in the lounge car, and, um, over in the center area where the water is and the newspapers, I see him, like, slide his hand up there. Then he walks out of the lounge car, so I'm like, hey, dude, watch this. So the kid's sitting, you know, near me, and I walk over there and lift it up, and, like, here's the money that I could do just to put the money under there. So we, 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 we did it. So the conductor came through, and this woman is just like in tears. The you know? city had its heroes as well. You know, it's like <laughs> this woman's in tears. Like, you know, it's like I'm just, you know, it was like one of those things where people are like, let's all like contribute ten dollars to her. You know, it's like fuck, she's two kids trying to make a life, and the, all the money in the world, like you know, with all her baggage and everything, is trying to like move on, and she gets fucking ripped off because she's such a very, you know, fucking wallet down to take care of her kid. So the one of the conductors comes by and I'm like, hey, I, the money's right over there underneath that, that Kleenex box in the newspaper. I saw him put it there. And the kids like, other kids like, yeah, I saw him too. He like fully put it there. So the train, you know, they, they take him and they put him up front or something like that. So the train, maybe like an hour or so later, is like going really slow over this, the quest of gray going into Paso Robles. And all of a sudden, it's like you hear all these people going, there's somebody out there running. 
he jumped, he like, when the train slowed down, he opened the vestibule door and jumped off the train. It was running up the hills in the middle of the mountains. Like, <laughs> I mean, the, like, at least, at least 10 miles from the nearest road, you know? Like, maybe the freeway he would have hit, but 10 miles from civilization, like, jumped out of the train. So it's, that kind of filled the probation parole type yeah. thing. Because, like, he was going to, he was going to, I ain't going back to county. <laughs> <laughs> going back to prison <laughs> if he, uh, if, if they caught him, so. But yeah, in, in the little city sense, it, it does have its its crime. And <coughs> you just reminded me of my my damsel in distress story from Uncle Elizabeth the other day. Damsel in distress. Was she wearing a dress? Yes. Good. Okay. Yeah. So I think I I don't know. I got out of piano class and. I wrote for a few hours, and then I had, you know, my, my daycare job downtown at the waterfront. What's that? Corporate kid events. Oh, is that like once a week or? No, it's like kind of as it happens thing. Generally, at least so far, it's been construction companies come and have a convention, and they rent out the presidential suite and turn it into a daycare. Really? Yeah. So that's my. I was I was on my way there, and it just started raining, which it hadn't it'd been really nice. And one thing you'll find when in Seattle is, as soon as the weather changes, the, like if the city takes the day off from fucking making sense, and like everything just kind of like shuts down for a second, Good. as if the weather never changes, <laughs> as if it can't be like raining on Capitol Hill and, and the, sh the sun's shining brightly down here. I'm, I'm, Burning story time here, but I couldn't I couldn't get a taxi to save my life. I was walking up and down Pike Street and waving at all the taxis. And every single taxi had a girl in the back of it who was taking the taxi. They still had their you know for higher lights on, of course. Yes. But they were also short. They were sitting in the back of the taxi that I couldn't I couldn't see that. So I'm just walk like walking down Pike Street, waving at every single taxi. And I just bought a new pack of smokes and I'm smoking my Prince cigarette I'm like okay at least I have this I'm, I'm a half hour late but at least I've got this going on and I see it, an orange cab come by and so I throw my cigarette in the gutter and wave go walk on the street and wave at him he just keeps going so I'm by Uncle Elizabeth now so I figure I might as well go in and get some coffee so I go in and Kyle says you know make it your damn self <laughs> <laughs> You work here still. Nobody ever stops. No, you know nobody ever gets out. You still work here. Make your coffee your damn self. So I'm making the coffee, and this girl comes in. It's the damsel in distress, and I mean she's like frighteningly beautiful, and she's like, you know, you can just tell that that there's some issue. And she's like, oh my god, I, oh my life's over, oh my god. And, I mean she's like s super dark black and just gorgeous and. Kyle's like, I think this is your department. <laughs> I think you're supposed to help her here. And she's like, this guy just, you know, this guy has my car keys. This guy has my car keys, and he's walking around because Uncle Elizabeth is in this big um, Catholic-owned building that is a restricted. Uh, what are we getting here? This is Obama. Thank you. Turn the cameras around. Is that it? We have about 30 seconds now. Uh, we got. I don't know. Look, she's, she's going one minute. You know, I just wish she's she's kind of hinting that she wants somebody to go beat this guy up for her. Huh? I just wish that uh, I'll knock the shit out of him. Like somebody would, you know. Oh, I wish my brothers were here. I wish this and that. Oh. So I kind of take my scarf off because if I'm gonna go try and act tough, I don't want to have something <laughs> <to be> <laughs> and like, rob me with my own American Apparel scarf. <laughs> Your tough scarf. Yeah. So um, I. 
stumble out in the street with her, and she's like, oh, God, this is so awful, so terrible. I'm like, here, you want a cigarette? I'm about to go to work. She's like, well, I can't, oh, it's not menthol, I can't smoke it. And then my, <laughs> my cab showed up, and the, the cabbie's like, hey, what's your name? Are you Brody? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but the guy was walking around pushing the button trying to get her car to chirp so he could drive off with it. He was from the, the home for alcoholics that's on top of Uncle Elizabeth. How did he get her key? She dropped it in the gutter by accident, and then she walked back over and was, she was like, Excuse me, did you just see these keys? Did you just see a set of keys? And he's like, and his hand in his pocket on the keys. Nope. I don't no, know what no. you're talking about. Oh, no. So she printed, went to Uncle Elizabeth and printed up her reward sign. 